Good evening. And now we've got something very special for you. First of all, I would like to thank all the men and women who have served in the military of the United States of America. All of us know we would not be here without you, and we truly thank you for your service. I also want to thank Greg Johnson and Rich Rosenberg, the two people who started this program. Little did they know how this was going to turn out, and it's truly been terrific. You know, we've been waiting for Greg to draw a bighorn sheep tag in Wyoming. And we all know how this preference point system works. You know, you apply for the tag, and then you hope you live long enough to go on the hunt. We hope Kyle will be able to go on a bighorn sheep hunt, but if, in fact, he does not draw a tag, then we'll send him on a hunt of his choice. I also would like to thank all of you who've contributed to this program, because without you, it would not be possible, and you truly have been most generous to our American heroes. Tonight, we have one more Marine at our table down here. Bradley Garfield called me and said, I've got a friend, and I wonder if he could come to the dinner. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Robert Skanky and his wife, Trish. He had a unique job in the Marine Corps. For four years, he flew Marine One, the helicopter that flew George Bush. Colonel and Trish, we're honored to have you here this evening. Would you start the video, please? 2019 marks the fifth year for the GSCO Wounded Veteran Program. This has been made possible by some very generous donors and auction buyers, and we anticipate the program moving forward and growing for many years to come. The Wounded Veteran Committee is made up of Dale Martin, United States Marine Corps, Keith Height, United States Army Vietnam Veteran, Harvey Trueblood, United States Navy Retired, Vietnam Veteran, and Dan Adler, United States Air Force. This committee will be coming to the stage to help honor this year's recipient. Before we get to this year's recipients, we'd like to mention that the 2015 recipient was Sergeant Major Hugh Foskey, and he got a Wyoming Bighorn on his hunt that year. Outfitter Josh Martolio guided Hugh free of charge as part of GSCO's program. The 2016 recipient was Sergeant First Class Jeremiah Wagner, he hunted with Leif Olson and Stone Mountain Safaris to get a great Canada moose that fall. We had two recipients in 2017, and they were Sergeant Marco Solt of Minnesota and Staff Sergeant Joshua Kruger of Wisconsin. Joshua also hunted with Leif Olson and Stone Mountain Safaris in October 2017 and took a fine Canada moose. Marco hunted with Rowdy McBride in West Texas and was able to take an Aldad Ram in December 2017. We had two recipients in 2018, and they were Chief Warrant Officer 5 Bradley Garfield, United States Marine Corps, and Captain Chris Migliaro, United States Army. Both Bradley and Chris are here with us tonight, so would both of you please make your way to the stage. Bradley, Chris, and their wives hunted in Spain with Antonio Terrell of Iber Hunting and took some fine trophies. We're going to have to say a few words and tell you about their hunt. Christopher, you're up. How's everyone doing tonight? <clears throat> Dale just told me I can talk as long as I want, but I'm going to keep it very short. Um, <laughs> so I'd never hunted internationally before. I really never left New Jersey before to hunt. So this was uh, an experience I was unsure about and what to expect, especially since I'm a bow hunter. Um, but Antonio and his crew over at Iber Hunting put on uh, an unbelievable trip for us along with Grand Slam Club Ovis. Um, I ate a lot. I came home heavier than I thought I was going to do, but I, I figured doing all the walking through the mountains that the food and the walking would balance out, but they didn't. <laughs> um, but Antonio treated us like family. They took care of us. My wife and I had an absolute unbelievable time. We wanted for nothing. The game was plentiful. The opportunities were plentiful. Um, I didn't capitalize on all of them, but I capitalized on a couple and took a, an Ibex that I thought about for the last 12 months leading up to that trip. And uh, it was emotional and it was, it was an unbelievable experience. So 
Um, I'm going to try and go back to Spain next year with Antonio and finish harvest, harvesting some more of the animals over in Spain. And I can't thank I thank all of you out there enough for your support and what you've done for, for me and my family and all the veterans. So thank you very much and God bless. And now Warrant Officer Bradley Garfield. I'm always the short guy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who are here and support this great effort. Um, last year was the first time that I was ever exposed to Grand Slam Club Ovis, and I have to tell you that um, this is a top-notch, top-shelf organization. Uh, we arrived at the airport, and they said our transportation was here, so we went outside and we were looking, and a guy holding a, a billboard with my name on it, so I went up and talked to him, like, yeah, I'm Brad. <clears throat> excuse me, I was figuring we were going to some taxi or something, and there was this huge stretch limo, and uh, my wife and I are like, is this for us? So, like, he grabbed us, put all our stuff in there, and brought us to the hotel, and, uh, I mean, from that time forward, it was incredible. Mr. Dale Martin here held our hand, walked us around, introduced us to everybody, all the big names, um, and on a lot of the outfitters, he introduced us to Antonio Teruel from Iber Hunting, who took us on our hunts. We spent some time talking to him, getting to know him. Um, he was very loose on the details, so we had no idea what we were going to do and, and what to expect for the hunt. Um, he said, we have all the time that we need to take, but believe me, you don't want to listen to me up here ramble on. Um, but I, I have to tell you that this is an incredible organization of, of people who are who uh, speak with their wallets and are um, incredible supporters of this Wounded Veteran Hunt program. And I have to tell you, I really appreciate it. You know, if you've ever been around Wounded Veterans, um, they're an interesting group. Um, but you, also, you know that a lot of us will tell you that we know somebody like Chris will tell you that hunting saved his life. It seems like something very overstated, but it's actually true, and he'll tell you that, you know, being turned on to hunting and having a purpose saved his life. And there's a lot of stories like that out there. So please, whenever the auctions open up, please uh, open up your hearts and your wallets because this is an extremely important program, and it does actually save people's lives. 22 to 23 veterans every day commit suicide, take their own lives. It's a horrible statistic, but it's, it's the reality of the world today. So help reduce that number, please. <clears throat> I have to thank Antonio, who's sitting over there with Iber Hunting. Without him, this wouldn't be possible. He donated his time, his money, his tags, um, everything. He opened up his heart and his home to us. Um, we had the best food that we could ever imagine big, huge spreads of seafood from the Mediterranean, fresh seafood. It was phenomenal. Again, top shelf and exceptional opportunity. I shot six animals in six days with six bullets. Um, so I have to um, say that a lot of that was attributed to my guide. Um, he And I have to tell you, it wasn't because of my marksmanship abilities. Um, even though the shots were longer than I'm comfortable with shooting, I don't like shooting more than 200 yards, or I try to get within 100 yards to make sure I'm going to put a good shot on the animal. But the rifle he gave me was some German gun I've never seen or heard of um, with some $10,000 scope on it where he, he dialed in the yardage or the, um, the distance and... Um, Unbeknownst to me, it was perfectly dead on. So um, he did a little dial. I put it in my shoulder and I pulled the trigger. Uh, that's about all I did. <clears throat> but Antonio got us there and, and put us on some great animals. So thank you, Antonio. I can't thank you enough. Um, so you probably saw some of the pictures. Um, Antonio hooked us up with a, uh, a Danish videographer and a hunter himself who came and followed us along. And you saw a little clip of the video earlier on. 
but he actually did a 23 minute full length um, hunting show that'll be seen throughout Scandinavia and Europe. So it was incredible and a great opportunity. So uh, Antonio tried to run us into the dirt. Um, if you know, if you've ever hunted in Spain, the Spaniards um, consider themselves, as he calls it, macho. They're, um, they're very macho men. They like to show you that how macho they are and try to, try to run you into the dirt. But um, as a retired Marine, um, I wasn't going to stop until my heart exploded. So we got there and got the shot off. So we were, we were very successful. But again, I have to thank all of you sitting out here in the crowd. Again, we wouldn't be here if it was not for you and supporting this great program, especially Dale and the, the board up here. I thank you all very much. I appreciate what you do. It's an incredible program for a great cause. There's no greater cause uh, than to support America's wounded veterans who put their lives on the line every day for every, each and every one of you. Um, God bless all of you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Now we'd like to recognize the 2019 recipient of the GSCO Wounded Vet Hunt. We ask you to hold your applause as hard as that's going to be until the end of the program. But right now, we'd like to invite this year's recipient to the stage, Corporal Kyle Thompson, United States Marine Corps. Kyle and his wife, Sandra, currently reside in Priest River, Idaho. He joined the Marine Corps as an infantryman but was then selected for the Amphibious Reconnaissance Marine level and passed, becoming an 0321 Amphibious Recon Marine. Kyle was deployed with the 1st Platoon Bravo Company, 1st Marine Division, to Iraq during 2007 and then to Afghanistan in 2010. While deployed in Afghanistan as a corporal and team leader, Kyle was on a mounted patrol in Marjah when his vehicle was hit with an IED. Kyle was knocked unconscious, suffering a traumatic brain injury. A few months later, Kyle was leading a mission on foot in the Sangin Valley when he and his point man were attacked in a complex ambush and was once again injured by an IED. Kyle has received the following awards and citations for his service. Two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star with a V for Valor, Combat Action Ribbon, two Sea Service Deployment Ribbons, Navy Unit Commendation, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal. Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, National Defense Service Medal, NATO Medal, Good Conduct Medal, and Navy Gold Wings Parachute Insignia. Kyle's eyesight is not great, about 2070 on a good day, and he has some other issues with his vision, such as trauma-induced glaucoma and a cataract with some macular pigmentation. However, Kyle's injuries do not keep him from doing the things he loves the most, hunting and fishing, mostly with his wife. Having grown up in Oregon, Kyle was able to hunt and fish a great deal. He's taken a few mule deer and elk with both rifle and bow. Recently, Kyle was able to pursue white-tailed deer as well. Kyle has never done a guided hunt, but has dreamed of doing so for quite some time. Any upcoming hunt allows him to train both physically and mentally, giving him a goal to set his mind to. The prospect of sheep hunting has given him the drive that he once had while still in the Marines. With the help of our generous donors, GSCO is honored to be able to send this very deserving veteran on his dream hunt. We're also proud to recognize Kyle as an honorary GSCO life member. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now join us in congratulating this American hero who has helped make it possible for us to even be here tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, forgive me. I had to write some of this stuff down. Um, you know, nerves and being in front of all of you 
famous people and a lot of role models of mine. So, uh, and I may have to put on my reading glasses at some point if this gets a little sketchy. So, give me a little bit of slack. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being present at the GSEO convention. As a hunter and conservationist, it is humbling for me to witness the massive amount of support generated towards wildlife, conservation, and stewardship from people like yourselves. I remember when I was very young, before I started hunting, uh, I'm guessing around nine years old before I started duck hunting, um, my favorite uh, excuse me, my favorite TV show was Wild America with Marty Stauffer. I'm sure most of you guys remember it. I don't, my wife doesn't have any idea what that show was, but uh, I used to watch it religiously. <clears throat> my favorite scene during the intro was the two bighorn sheep slamming into each other. That was just such an iconic scene. And at the time, I had never seen any, any kind of uh, bighorns, or uh, sheep for that matter, uh, growing up in Central Oregon, so uh, it just it made a lasting impression on my mind. <clears throat> I've been lucky enough now, uh, fishing and on the Snake River and John Day in Oregon, and then moving to Idaho. I've seen a lot of sheep over the years uh, in both Oregon and Idaho. Uh, they have and will continue to be among some of the most breathtaking animals I've ever seen in North America, um, and they hold a special place in my heart. So, at the end of my deployment to Afghanistan in uh, 2010, my good friend, Gunnery Sergeant, now Gunnery Sergeant Jacob Edmondson, uh, and I were sitting, eating an MRE in this little compound, and somewhere back on Camp Leatherneck, uh, I found a discarded magazine, a hunting magazine. I don't remember uh, exactly what it was, but it had an article. Uh, and that article, I don't remember the author's name, but he was describing how best to draw a sheep tag as far as spreading out preference points. And it was, it was really in-depth, and it, it went you know, all through the West, what state in New Mexico, how much money you had to spend and, and all that. And uh, after reading it thoroughly, I got to tell you, I got pretty discouraged um, figuring that I had to be about 55 years old to actually get a sheep tag in my own home state of Oregon. Yeah, and that's not including point creep. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, after thoroughly reading it, and realizing there'd be no easy way to draw the necessary preference points in a timely fashion, I got a little bit dismayed. The next article, however, was in reference to a wounded warrior hunting trip. And so in 2010, I hadn't even heard about this before. I had, I had buddies that had been wounded, but at the time, um, it really hadn't kicked over yet. And we weren't, you know, we didn't hear about that kind of stuff. So. My friend, my, uh, my buddy Gunny Edmondson, we started talking about and theorizing exactly how do we get on one of those wounded warrior veterans trips. So, <clears throat> in the long hours of the night, my friend and I contemplated just how injured you would have to be to qualify for that kind of trip. <laughs> so, that morning, my team was hit by a complex ambush. It was two weeks before my platoon left Afghanistan. It was right at the very end of our deployment. Um, my point man sustained uh, triple amputation, and then I caught the rest of it. <clears throat> I was completely blind at the time. I didn't regain my vision for another four months, but at the time, I just, you know, I hit my, I had a morphine pack in my shoulder and I hit myself and I kind of calmed down, but I just had no idea what was going on. I just kind of let everything flow because I trusted in my, my brothers to my left and my right to get the job done. <clears throat> so 
So I wasn't sure what was happening exactly. And my, uh, my brain was kind of discombobulated. So when I was being loaded onto the medic back, uh, the helicopter, I told my assistant team leader to tell my buddy Jake, I said, hey, tell Jake, at least maybe I'll get to go on a sheep hunt. <laughs> Fast forward eight years, my dream comes true. The opportunity to go after one of these animals that I have loved for so long is hard to explain in words. The last few years, I have really immersed myself in the ethos that comes with being a good hunter. It is one thing to be just an outdoorsman, but to be a hunter, in my mind, is to be a conservationist. To protect the resources that we still have and to facilitate the improvement and well-being of these resources for generations to come. In closing, I would like to thank my wife, Cassie, not Sandra, for her unending support of all my endeavors. I would also like to thank, from the bottom of my heart, GSCO and its members. You made this incredible hunt of a lifetime come true. And I'm proud to be a member of the GSCO, and I will continue to be for the rest of my life. Thank you.